Um, your words would be back online? No, it's not yet. He's not. Well, I'm chasing him. Chasing him. We'll just um, pick up that last agenda item before we went and had lunch, which was um, refresh those that have just joined on page um, 245, the, the housing policy. And we get Tim online, and I can report all the hey, areas. Hey, hey there, Tim. Yep, here I am. Excellent. Right, you have a nice lunch. Um, reheated of last night's dinner, um, but I can still taste, which is a bit of a bonus. Very good. OK, um, you want me to leave the box? Yes, oh, yeah, OK. So um, thank you for the assistance of Saskia and um, Sanchia over the lunch break. Um, proposed recommendation, the recommendation is proposed for C and D now read as follows. Um, And the note that's up on the board there, but Steve now says directs the CEO to hold off any further work on the outstanding action to work with the sector partners in the region to build a full picture of the housing model, center program, and look for opportunities to collaborate to achieve better housing impact of the district. So that can be pushed out of hold. And indeed, they are agreed to direct the CEO, direct the CEO to provide the council with advice on preferential purchasing options for smaller footprint properties that describe in the provision of the different housing topologies and development of council owning land policy. So we do one and two, A and B, that will approve the policy, and then D says, now yeah, go and do some work on that and leave C. Um, it's still something that's near to be picked up on going forward. So we move us forward today. We'll be happy with that, so uh, with the, the appropriate course of action. Thoughts, comments? I'm happy with that. Normally stops nothing else from happening. With respect to gear ad, it carries on. Um, it leaves, leaves this matter for what will be a new council. I don't think it'll be back at the next meeting. For a new council, they're going to get its head around as well. Might then be able to get a better effect to see. I'm prepared to move ABC and D. I'll do it. Tim, discussion? That has a negative, sorry. Any discussion? Any comments? No, I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Against. Against. Carried. Thank you. Thanks, um, Saskia and Sanchia, um, for working that through. And thank you um, to the team of my team of fellow councillors that have um, helped us get somewhere with that. So it's a good outcome. Thank you. Right, yeah. That now moves to lunch. I know we had I got excited again. I thought, well, make good. Ah, let's welcome um, Julie and um, the bell at the table. And they're going to take us through the three rules of reform, better off funding and track one report. Um, page 251 on the agenda item 22.6.9. Welcome, Frank. Your paper bags. So we do think it is uh, the report is being read, and there's just a few different points um, that we would like to um, emphasize. So um, this this council have put together this list of um, on several lists of projects for consideration by council, um, and it's been they've been split out into projects that are deliverable within the next 18 months, and projects that we think would be better suited for consideration in tranche two. For varying reasons. So, the projects that have been identified for consideration in tranche one have either been included in that 2021 long term plan and have had increases in scope which need additional funding, um, or they are to accelerate projects in later years of the long term plan, or are required to address um, issues that have arisen that we, we would need to come back to council for additional funding for. Um, in, in that um, within the next 18 months. So the timeline for tranche two will align with council's 2024 long term plan process um, where new projects may actually be identified. Um, so for that reason, um, while we've got some projects that we think um, are worthy for consideration in tranche two, we believe that there could be others that could be could come up over the next 18 months that may get added to that list. So um, that the list for tranche two are therefore information and consideration. 
but we wouldn't see it as being a priority to start prioritising this the trash to at this point. Um, so um, one of the things that um, we actually haven't clarified very well within the report we know really good in terms of the key prioritisation factors um, was that there was a couple of projects that were included in the tranche one high priority one list um, that were, were um, put in there to help prepare council for um, the funding that would, could become available through tranche two. Um, so to enable you to be able to make that application for tranche two, there will need to be um, some EWI engagement around um, the tranche two list. So for um, tranche one, we are required to um, really up, um, it, it's not it, as a higher level of engagement required. It's more a communication that this is what we're intending to do. Are there any issues that we have with the proposal that we're putting up? And then how can we um, address those issues going forward? Um, whereas with tranche two, there's an expectation from government that there'll be a higher level of engagement and discussion around the development of the program. So we have allowed some funding in there for that engagement to occur, um, noting that, um, that that amount may be less um, if we're able to streamline that process across the councils, um, across the Otago region. Um, we've also included a project um, that is a community wellbeing framework and indicator data set. So that builds, um, helps develop a vision for the district um, and then take, looks at all the information that's currently available out in the community around different wellbeing um, indicators and how that information can be, um, or that data can be pulled together to provide some meaningful in information on which to base decisions for um, future work programs. Um, so really, I think that the um, process from here is really for you to have um, some discussion around the, the projects that are on those lists. Um, we would, um, probably propose that you look at the um, list one first and um, agree whether or not those projects that are on this one should be on this one. And then our proposal would be that you look at the contingency list and um, add some prioritise a group of projects that are worth at least a um, million dollars, but you might not like to go um, add an extra $500,000 or a million dollar um, window on that because the estimates for these projects are uh, quite rough order at this point and the projects could come in below or they could come in higher and we will need to um, juggle around some of the projects um, that come through on the contingency list so that they add up to the total figure and that'll be kind of an ongoing process as the um, program develops and we get more firm costs coming through from the work that we undertake them. Thank you, Julie. Um, not sure the best way to do this, but I've got it right. List one, tranche one high priority, that's that's for the, the, the first tranche of funding, and, and that's your recommendation yep. for the ones that are the priority. Yes, yeah, so we have based that on those key prioritisation factors yep. that are in the report. And then just to make sure, then list two, tranche one contingency, that's what you're saying that down to the sub trouble of 996, that could be the other million dollars of the capital, and that yes. would be your ranking? Uh, no, so can I just make it clear that um, it's very difficult for us to rank these objects because um, all of them are good projects mm -hmm. and it's hard to choose what, which one. So we, we consider that choice to be a political choice. But if you add down, you will see that you come to a point down there, which yes, is around top. So there are no particular order that just happens to be where close to a million dollars runs out. Yes. Right. The top part might be if we may have put some thinking around the order of those, but certainly not the bottom part of the list, because we recognise that you may want to swap in and out, and there was a lot of big point in getting to them on it. So just to be clear, if we go ahead and our back 3.21 million. Are we fix them and that's what we have to do? Uh, no, so um, one of the things that you might like to consider doing is um, for example that um, so you could put a you could have a list of say four and a half million dollars and you then deliver projects up to 3.21 million from that four and a half. It doesn't have to be um, 
just make sure I've got that wrong in the rules. Um, so for example, um, where we anticipate that we're going to get funding from MEB for the new wheelie bins, um, we, would, we haven't put that as a hope in, in the actual project list, but you might like to include that project in your contingency list and hold back on spending $750,000 until such time as you're certain that you're getting that funding, and then you might um, say, okay, we can we can accelerate some of the other projects on the list now. All right. So for the purposes of the day, we need to confirm the the, the, the um, branch one priorities and projects. Yeah. And yeah. you've said to us a high priority sits on list one. So we start with list one, and and here. With a couple of any concerns, I mean, it's going to be um, probably go through them one by one because it's probably the only way to properly do it. <laughs> and um, so we'll start with the Henry Murray engagement front two, which is a sum there to to um, the climate to get the France two funding. So I think that that's all fact. Otherwise, you don't get France two. Is that true? Right? How that reads? Yes. Yeah. And that's going to affect the fact that the engagement cost, which is um, Okaha, Tia Marama, whoever it might be, is going to have a cost of it. Yes, okay. yeah, and, and you know that's similar for any yeah. organisation that has to put resources into a process. Right. Um, and I think um, while not in the report today, the previous report that had put quite a bit of interest on the, yeah. the need for EU engagement um, and um, involvement in the process. Yeah. So the previous report is in the attachments yeah. at this point. Any comments about that? Have you believe that in? <clears throat> Uh, next one, community wellbeing framework indicator data set, $10,000. Again, that looks like it's a requirement for trans two applications. And also for the long term plan development. Yeah. Any comments? Right. Uh, third one, progressing of the records visualization of the rainwater property files plus online access, $151,000. There's quite an extensive um, explanation in there for that. Yep, so that's a top up funding to enable yeah. that program work to continue. Yeah. Otherwise, we will be very happy to bring the council to I'm sorry, it's something that's being worked through. If we don't do it through here, we'll have to fund it at the rates. Mm. All other reserves. All right. Any comments? Come on, Paul. Uh, so just just with the two pools, it's actually the other way around. So the Cromwell pools, the $400,000 figure, and the outbound pools, the $250,000 figure. Sorry, we made a bit of and so that those are both projects that if that work doesn't get done, then the operation cost in the future repair costs will increase as a consequence. So they're not the budget to be done anyway? They are out in further years. 30 years? Uh, about 30, 26, 26, 27. Wow. Yes, yes. Um, Whitehall. Alexander Community Centre. Oh, sorry, I just went over and dropped down my big bunch. Alexander Community Centre, thanks, um, Pamela. 584,500, so that looks like it's a. Uh, so, both of the, the Alexander Community Centre and the Clyde Hall, uh, they're both projects that have co funding allocated to them. So, uh, the cost of them is higher than what we originally budgeted for. That does include some scope changes to improve energy efficiency as well. Um, but, but the co funding is at risk if those projects are proceeding from the Any comments on either of those two? Over the page. Um, yeah, that's really good. Um, the technology for the um, <coughs> libraries, $161,000. And, and so this one is to actually address the um, implications of increased use at the libraries um, at the same time as some positions will, um, that were temporarily funded through government or others will cease. Exist. So this will enable um, the op library operations to be undertaken more efficient um, and not, not necessarily to then need additional staff to meet the increased demand. And that's something that's not any really other budgets going forward, is it? No. And, and I don't think, you know, to be fair, that probably we anticipated when we did the 2024 LTP that, that we were going to be getting that kind of growth in library season. Comments about that? It does seem actually almost counterintuitive to what 
people like me will be talking to him on live as you going forward. But that chain is still um, uh, very, very popular and well used. Uh, diversified uh, portfolio is another one to a whole lot of other areas which are community, meeting community demand. You know, they're, teach, they're teaching old people how to use computers and things like that. You know? Not possible. <laughs> I was surprised to see that increase. That's a significant increase in users, which I wouldn't have anticipated. Yeah, and borrow as well. I mean, that's not yes. just yeah. old people learning to use the computer. It's people yeah. going there for books. And of course, the borrowers doesn't take into account all the other people that go in to learn mm. how to use computers and things like that. And, and look, I would say we are using the libraries for um, more of our community activity, even even in the um, waste reduction space. We use the libraries now as a um, place to hold some of those events. What's interesting is that, is that when we discuss those figures of 33, 36 percent and 22 percent for Alex, um, the assurance was that those we met increases on hard copy borrowing, and I assume there's no easy way to measure increases in electronic borrowing. Yes. Well, judging by the wait list for getting books electronically, <laughs> there's a huge demand. Yes. But that's. Yep. So it's, it's a, a, bit a simple question. Is there any way of measuring increases? The reporting that we've got now um, doesn't allow us to do that, but. We are reading on um, that platform so we can. It'd be interesting to have both sets of data. Yeah, it would yeah. be. It just gives us, it finds a bit more detail and um, yeah. things. All right, now the comments about that and the council loan building seismic assessment from there. Yeah, wasn't that. Well, isn't that already accounted for? Um, some of them have been done, but not all of them. Um, so that um, so this is your area. No, no, it's all, it's all good. Um, so some of the DSAs that we've been in the the whole we've actually gone in this process to use initial sides of assessments in um that was all based on assumptions, whereas a detailed sides of assessment to be based on the basic on investigation. So the much more concise um, the way to test the, the severity of the board. Right, but haven't we given funding in the long term plan going forward for the remainder to be done? No. no. So, so what, what's happened is um, we had $180,000 in there, but you know, the amount that's become associated with this is um, the testing of these fire systems and the accessibility of the building as well as well as this business is a two D equation. So this is about a lump sum. Absolutely. Yeah. And it doesn't really seem um, a good uh, and efficient mm -hmm. or effective way to do it to not um, if, to bring a report to you saying this work needs to be undertaken on a building and then have oh, but we we will have another report on accessibility and we'll have another report on fire safety. You know you need to have the whole picture in front of you when you're considering those upgrades that will be required. So and what was the timeline we were given to have the assessment? I think it's like 12 years or 25 years or something. It's it's on those lines. Um, but because they are community buildings and we've probably got the activity in the spaces, we kind of want to prioritize that and get education up front. And, and the other reason for this one is that there's um the potential to undertake some of the upgrading work that may be required with the tranche two funding. And so we want to get those yes, assessments yes. done now so that that can then inform um the consideration around the tranche two funding. This is that so I don't know the best of money, but that's for the generation thing. Anything else about that? So that, that's that's your high priority, and now we need to move to the contingency funds to find another million dollars to, to give you some priority about. Or um, yes, so we would suggest that um, that there's an that there's more than a million dollars included. Um, and if you were to say up front that you want to consider that seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. For the bins, which is um, we're going to apply for MEB funding for, then you would want to have at least seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars 
extra on your contingency list to swap that project in and out. So where is that? So we list? would put that um at the bottom of the page. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. So we would put that seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars on the contingency list. That would be our recommendation. And then have um but hold buyer on on actually proceeding to construction or anything with um seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars of work until the um the applications considered by LMFB. And that application is going in, I believe, in October. So I think what you're saying is for the remainder of tranche one had another one point seven million dollars mm. sitting there with, with the bins at the top of that, potentially. Yes, awesome. yes. And then if we get the phone, then they drop off and then the rest come all come up. Yeah, so you'd want more than 1.7 because you've got 1 million to spend any. Oh, okay. Plus, you know, given that that's a really large project, yep. um, so you, if, if that one dropped off, your 1 million would all get done. Yes. But if any of the others come in oh, okay. under budget or they're delayed or anything, you wouldn't have anything approved to be able to fill in. And it's quite good if they can be a list of smaller projects because you're trying to hit that 3.21 million. So yeah, you, you want projects that might be a few hundred thousand, but you might also want a project that's thirty thousand dollars. So but the bins around that cost here and cost only to the people who've got them. So there is so effectively that money was spent somewhere else in the community can affect the whole community. That's only oh, that's for all of these projects though, I think. Um they were all Will appeal to different parts of the community. One of them. But given we had an additional project that potentially could yes, for us, that's so another one. But I would have suggested that this is where it yes, be because it's already shown already enough started. Yeah, so that's a discussion to have on that one too. Yeah, so that's one that um, came in after we had um, put the report through the process and, and met the deadlines. So um, that project is for um, fencing at the um, Roxburgh Court. Um, and it's um, has an estimated cost of um, I'd say one hundred and eight thousand dollars. Mm. So that's an additional one that you may want to have some discussion around whether we include that onto the uh, first onto the list for consideration, and then we balance the list at six. Roger. Given that Judy's comments and your context of. of one million and then one point one point seven million. Does that almost automatically eliminate the Alexandra Library renovation as as a likely contingency just because of the size of it? Um there's a million dollars left. <clears throat> but taking that, taking Judy's points about oh, seven hundred goes to that, there's not enough left to cover that one. So yeah. my question yeah. tied into that, with in particular thinking of the bins, given that if there were no funding, we would be paying for it anyway. Can it be part funded by this and the rest of it funded from rates or whatever we were going to be using anyway? Or did these projects have to be completed with the funding? Technically, yes. You could do a portion of it because there's yeah. multiple kind of different sub projects within it because it's not all the same bin. So I guess if you're going to pull it in as a contingency, you could say we will do the Three hundred thousand, and we'll pay the other, and we'll pay the rest. Yeah, um, because essentially you're still delivering what you said. You're so the, the really important thing that we um, and we've we've had some conversations with Crown Infrastructure Partners around this. The really important thing for them, um, and and for the DIA is that the projects that you can say we're going to spend this much money, and at the end of that we are going to have this. Um, so. But it's really important that there's a really clear outcome that in a deliverable that yeah. you can put your um, hang your hat on. Yeah. All that for money. And so for example, for the um, seismic assessments and that we will have to say, you know, three hundred and twenty thousand dollars for this many. And, and at the end of that, we will get a report that will outline what the requirements, the upgrade requirements are on, on this many buildings. And if we didn't do the size of activity, when would that, we have to do that legally and find when, when would that be? Are we not just bringing forward an issue that otherwise would be in a 10-year, 20-year budget line? So this is, um, this is going to tell you what you need to do. You can't make any planning for what 
you're going to need to do and the cost of doing that work until you know what you need to do. And so that's why we think it's quite important to get that information in now because you're going to need to sit down and if not do tranche two, then at least do the long term plan next year. Um, and if you don't know how much the upgrades of the buildings are going to cost or how bad the condition are, then it's very hard to make for you to make informed decisions. Right, so move forward. I think we've been given the indication that you need more than a million dollars worth to have available. You need a priority list of that million dollars listed when it's ready to go. So the first consideration I think is saying <clears throat> is the rock the full one? Is it fit either on branch one, branch one, list one, list two, or doesn't it fit at all? Branch one, list one. But yeah, so the question is does it fit? Anybody going to disagree that it fits? I'm sure you got a question. No, it's all right. We we get in there. Okay. So once I had somebody come to me request with a request. Okay. Right. So I guess the first thing about the full one is that does it fit? Yeah. No disagreement. The question the next question is where does it fit? Is it in tranche one or is it in tranche two? Given that we've heard that it's shovel ready and they started. Well, we started and then the money we got the money that goes as that's where it goes. That's it. So it's tranche one? Yep. Yeah. Right. The question then is it is it list one or list two? One. Any disagreements with one? If it goes into the that, one comes off. So, well, it, 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 I think I've got one. Yeah. one. I think I've got one. It's ready to go $100,000 list. Yeah, two. Yeah, it's shovel, really. Another one, and it might be, you can't want it, money to that one, or whatever you need to do. Julie, we've got that right, Shanzel, about added to the list one. Yeah, yeah. It just means it reduces what you've got left to $900,000. Yeah. That's, so, no, no, it doesn't. Not making up the priority. Well, no. we're saying in effect that it's more had more priority than anything on yeah. um, all list two of front one. I think if you read the information, it sort of says that they can't open without the fencing. So yeah. it's kind of kind of yeah. so going on to uh, list one, everyone's happy that there's nothing else on the list two that, that actually is more important than this. Mm. Yes. Everybody's happy with that? Yep. Yeah. Um the Cromwell Bike park toilets are <clears throat> a, um, quite an important, I think they're more important than where they are. Yeah, I don't think yeah, I think what should be if they don't take any notes where it is, we can move that. We can move that. So I'm yeah. just saying this that and um but I live two blocks from them and people park down as far as my place to use this. They can't use the squash courts, it's not open to the swimming public. And I think a lot of people confuse the BMX part of it with the whole bike park. The whole park, park as a whole is used. There are four different group of parts to that bike park. The BMX is just one quarter of it, but it's probably the most high profile. Um, but the closest toilets are Alpha Street, which is a long way away. Too long for little boys and old men. And so uh, they've tried putting up quarter Loops, which would just get vandalized and abused. And so they're looking for something and something as soon as possible. Right, so. The Cromwell Community Board has been heard this. I haven't been there, but yeah. it's. Um, no, no, and it's in the long term plan for funding. And, um, so I think we're just right the full. Originally, is in list one. Julie's now making a case for something on list two to go to list one. Um, so I think everything now is, as you're saying, what are we pulling up to this one yeah. now? Yeah. Um, so there's nine hundred thousand dollars approximately. Um, yeah. Um, um, but if we put if we put the rock with full in there, it's now eight hundred thousand dollars. No, no, there was no. a million now. Oh, sorry. Exactly. Sorry, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking nine hundred thousand dollars. It was two that you yeah. I, I I support Shirley's comments around the, the urgency. Especially in the football development and, and the, it's growing in usage all the time. And Shirley's in a particularly good position to see firsthand. And I can see firsthand where they are utilising things that aren't toilets as toilets. Ah, yeah, it's good. Which is it's good of that. Yeah, it's it's good all in a safety issue too. If you've got two kids and one parent and one of them needs to go and the other doesn't need to, and yeah, yeah I, I'm in favour of that as well. Getting the family the bike 
Thank you, Tim. And yeah. there's a lot of children now in prospectors can't use that bike park. Yeah. Right. So um any other thoughts about those thoughts coming on to the next one? I think they've shipped around $660,000 right. now. All right, because you're going to make the next play for a couple now. I guess too. Library. Library. Renovation. Yeah. I agree. Of course you do. How much is the library renovated? $600,000. $600,000. Can I speak to that, Neil? Yeah, please. I see huge value in that renovation, but I also see that it's going to chew up a huge portion of other things that could happen. And I'm not saying that it shouldn't. I'm just saying we need to be aware of that. And also that we've already given priority in the libraries across the district with the RFID to the tune of 361. So I'm, I'm seeing a, six, a sector that's done OK, and I'm looking at one place in central Otago receiving a, a, a really aligned share and I'm looking at a lot of other smaller things that perhaps we could have a better spread, but I'm 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 raising that point rather than arguing it. I just want us to be aware. Yeah, sounds just gonna make a comment about that. I get, I guess it's just to note that the renovation of the library has been delayed for a number of years and I've been thinking of the staff that have been working in relatively average conditions there. Uh, um, the increase in users and the ability for that project to for us to play our part in regenerating Target Street as well, which is a really nice bookend with the, the river part. Not arguing it one way or another way, either, but I think the, it's, it's kind of something that's been delayed for a really long time. And so whether or not a lack of paint to this point really meets the needs of what the community saying they want there. No, I'll probably yeah. add to that, but that's another comment around toilets and the lack of toilet mm -hmm. care and the ability for parents with young children to be packing up and going to use the public toilets down the road. And the fact that this came to our meeting not that long ago, it was said that this was and the place going to be applied for yeah. and that recognising that if it didn't get this, it, all it was going to get was a little bit. It's a matter of maintaining a council asset, isn't it? We are in the building. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the LTP and it's underfunded. Yeah, so so it's already in the funding. So, but is this not, uh, if I may, this is this is an extension beyond what the LTP has funded. So this is this 423 in the LTP, which is more than a lick of paint. This is I'm not going to say bills and whistles because I don't think it goes that far. So I don't, look, I'm I'm a little bit ambivalent. Um, either way, we just got to look at what we are going to miss out on if we do do that. If we decide to that's everything, there's always going to be yeah. things that we don't do and things that we do do, and it's just prioritising them. And then as a backup, you can have some of those smaller, you know, thirty thousand dollar bits that you can, if you need them, you can, you know, draw on them. You're three million now, right? Yeah. yeah, but that's like duty time. That's okay. But that's she wants to start oversubscribing anyway. Yeah. So you can put in some so, of those smaller ones that actually don't require as much money. Can follow them just to sort of top it up. Yeah. So, so the question is, is for us to decide, are we happy to put that as, as a higher up a priority at this stage? Yes. I'd like to. Yeah. So straw poll says, Shirley saying no, Nigel's not sure. Cheryl, one, two, three. Paul's getting twice as much on their talk. Yeah, I'm sorry, um, the numbers are there to put it through. Yeah. Yeah. That's just. Right. So that's the best of how much left. Uh, 48,000. Now, just at this point, I guess what I would say is um, like, like we've done estimates. So I could say 48,000, but you know, you might end up having 200,000 left, or you might have not have 48,000 dollars left. So um, when we get into the actual work. So I, what I would suggest is that for the projects that are sitting there um, <clears throat> that are smaller amounts of money, less than 50,000, that you just, so you need to pick that you just say any of these projects would um, be okay. Well, How much more dollar worth would yeah. you like to see? So, so we want, 
there's 48,000 that we have at the funding that we expect to have that's not currently allocated. So, but I would like to see you put up probably, I shouldn't tell, well, um, you know, with the stimulus, with the water stimulus program, we ended up having to swap a lot of projects around because there were delays. So, so maybe, maybe it's five. Pick, yeah, maybe pick maybe three projects that are, um, I guess you're three hundred thousand dollars or three projects, but it's probably better not to have a three hundred thousand dollar project. It's probably better to have three um, that around the hundred thousand, and then those leave those ones that are smaller sums of money on the list because we can pull them in quite quickly if we need to. And and at the point at which you're pulling in, you're making calls around how ready is this? How quickly can we get the materials? Are we able to do this now? So when we look at funding, the forty putting something against the forty eight thousand. Which is probably going to be two things. Yeah. Probably look at why because there's a $30,000 project, maybe a $15,000 project. Yeah. Because that's just the only way to get close to that. Memorial Survey, I'm not sure that we've got enough budget and the money we've got because every other contingent we have is over 30%. That doesn't matter. We've still got no. it. Yeah. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and get that to the point where it's about 30 or 40 million and then we're going to get it uh, it's all yep, well and good yep. the war memorial is still standing, but if we have an yep. emergency event, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. really are about important because we haven't got a performance, we haven't got to do anything anyway. And I'll go with the generators and I'll go with replace the district one with flag with T. So you're saying, Tony, don't, don't worry about the 48, over subscribing with the generators? Yeah, I've just got 300,000. Well, as Julie said, projects are around about 300,000. We'll put in a mix and then we'll have a closer idea. Yeah. And if we only got forty eight thousand dollars left and the generator doesn't get there, mm. well, one generator gets it, not three. Yeah. I just talked yeah. right. So let's just work that through. So like adding to the list, um virtual generators, war memorials, flags. Uh, yeah, we got a video. Or video. 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 Oh. And I think the video is a really important one. We've got some good videos. People making our videos are absolutely outstanding. Let's use them while we've got them and, and provide that. We know we've got an employment crisis, anything we can do to help. I think that's a great one. Yeah, and, and, um, and I don't want to um, influence you on Julie, no, but no. even the shade sales, if you don't keep like the pot in 10 shade sales, you could end up putting in five shade sales because that's what the amount of money is that's left. You know, those projects are quite useful. If they're approved um, to, to kind of smooth out that amount of money that's left at the end. Yeah. And and you don't want to have to go back to DIA because you've got found that you are four hundred thousand dollars under budget. Yeah. And you need four hundred thousand dollars of projects approved by them. <laughs> so um stage sales before um oh sorry, just think the portable housing study, I think we can park that at this stage to be okay. based on the resolution we made earlier today. It might come up or might not come up. So park that. Um, so what else is on the, on the cemetery upgrade? So park furniture, and once again, that's a, a small amount that, um, yeah, I would, I would quite like that idea. All right, the park furniture in. Just going to build those with food in. Get the bike park toilets in. Um, major playground equipment, major public toilets. Public toilets in many, many. And so what I would say is that once you're getting down to those Public toilet projects yeah. um, that that have to be a part of the former one, obviously that was in. Um, we can't build half it for you, so yeah. they're either in or they're out, right. and we wouldn't know till quite late in the piece that they were in. So the ability to. Okay, so now we're getting to the stage of those big, those big number ones that yeah. about 100 and are all gone. So basically, that means if you're looking at this list, yeah. if you've got um, parks for the Minnetoto. On, on the back page and in the front page, you've got generated war memorials, flags, shade styles, and video. What is that going to do? Uh, you yeah. Didn't she have speed? Maybe six and a half. Not quite how the continuous reasons go on this given recent experience. So, I'm agreeing with you. Oh, no way. I'd say 385. Now, 
less 48. Takes What's our goal? So that's a fairly good decision. Let's put them in anyway. See how we go. Yeah, about 3.30. I'm going to read back what we've got. I've got the list. I've got the right. I've got the emergency yeah. generators, 120. <clears throat> yes. Warmer Royals, 30. Yes. Yeah. Jade sales, did we bang that in? Could come out in a minute, so put that in. 100. Yeah. Uh, flags, 15. The video, 20. And then over the page, park furniture, 45. 330. Okay. 330. Oh. That's 330 of which 48 was supposedly left. So that's 292. Then um, yeah, your 100k for the sales, you got. Yeah. Um, what do you reckon? I'm not looking at you. I'm not looking at is that we add as low priorities but included in the funding application yes. we include the Cromwell Cemetery upgrade grade and the Starlink communications because that gives us another hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Oh, it's just sucked here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That is actually, that, I'm very pleased with that because that outlook from the Cromwell Cemetery over the industrial site is bloody terrible. So yeah. I think so that's a good one. Like, really, you can't see much though. <laughs> yeah. They will only come in if yeah. there's something else has a yeah. has a delay. Yeah. Or, I get that, but yeah. better to have a half a foot in the door than none. Sorry, my metaphors aren't as good as Stu's, but that'll have to do to them. <laughs> so is it worth putting in something like the volleyball courts at just 12,000? Which could be outlet. So just to we need yeah. something really small just to. So what we did was we um we typically took out projects that were smaller amounts because we knew that the reporting requirements are quite onerous. And those ones are often that hard for the community boards to fund. Oh sorry, I just yeah. saw them here. So I yeah. Um, initially, we, we brought the first report to council, we kind of packaged it up as swimming pool. Um, improvements, and so we included it in that. Um, if, yeah. Right. So, just in terms of the resolution, I want to be clear. So, this is all about effectively resolution E, reason that this project is a value of, and we're going to have to we should list those projects in, the, in that resolution. Yeah. So, just can I clarify for the purposes of the staff going away and managing this? As with the bins, do we want to? Um, to take that approach that if they don't get funded through the MFA, that you have the option of pulling them into this later on. I think we give us well, that is a question. Do we give ourselves the flexibility to, to bring it in if it, if it doesn't get funded or not? Well, see, it can't fund it because it would make the library come out. Well, 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 wouldn't it get funded? Yeah. But it, well, it costs you nothing to do that, does it? Yeah, it, it costs yeah. nothing. We would have to bring a report back to council to say we were going to delay other things to pull it in. Um, so you get to make the call at that point that yes or no, yeah. but that would just give you that flexibility. Yeah, so why not do it? Right, so yeah. effectively we're going to carry millions of extra through. Yeah. yeah. Which is fine, but rather than tagged, they're not being funded. Yeah. So on the resolution, do we need to list all these projects and can someone um, yeah. Okay. put them in? Yeah. <clears throat> so that's that's um, okay. that's 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 um, yeah. What else do we think? It looks great, fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see your four shade saves and raise your two electrics tomorrow. <laughs> right, um, so can I just read off my list and that'll hopefully see if we've got the right answers? Don't worry about that. Look at some old furniture, man, Billy. Really. Yeah. Yeah. So, Get the generator and a seat and watch the generator start with any chaos. We can watch the generator go up in the new seats yeah. in the park. I agree. Yeah. You're right. Do we need the truck? Yeah, I was going to say, what's, mis what's missing is, is list one is missing. Yeah, so all of, all of list one. So maybe you can actually put list one from um, 
Just one straight one. Okay. Just one from and it's a majority from Phoenix Food. Yeah, yeah, that's actually yes, there. Um, there's yeah. a list of projects that are to be included in funding proposal in appendix two of the report. No, you go to the list. list. It's list one. Oh, list one. one. List one. Tracks one. one plus. Yep. All. And list one of appendix two. And, and then all the other ones. Other the second floor is people. What library. do you want? The value of the rocks before that. Yeah. Okay. Um. And after list one of appendix two. With the addition of the rocks were pulled. Uh, addition of the rocks were pulled. Yeah, project. Project. Just one hundred eight thousand one Just one hundred eight thousand one And what they can estimate their accurate they should be kicked off the project manager. That park furniture is park furniture for many total interior. Right. And the Naseby public toilets shouldn't be in there. And the Naseby public toilets should not be there. No. And the Naseby public toilets should not be there. Okay, can we go back to where it says approves the list, take that out. Yeah. And put in three projects. Then list one of the things too. It's not good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in terms of the resolution, we approved the projects. Yeah, and let me just bring it down so you can change that for a back up. I think as long as it's clear in your resolution what you've approved, definitely to go ahead versus what yeah. is going to be the backup up list. So it should just say list one and then a contingency list of. Yeah, just because obviously this is prioritisation stuff has to go away and do a funding proposal based on us. So it needs to be clear what ones you're saying we should proceed with in the first instance. I'm wondering, just let, let me, let, why don't we just park this for a minute? Let Wayne and the team and we'll move on to the mayor's report for another mundane stuff while we just get this nut down. Is that right? Yeah, mundane. The mayor's report's mundane. I can assure you. Is that, is that a good idea? Just rather than trying to put your hands in way and Rebecca three years yeah. of the ones we're trying to say the same thing differently. Right. Um, right. Yeah. We get the mum later. Well, I um, no, just um, we park that item and then move on now to um, item C. Item number two, twenty two point six point ten, which is the mayor's report on page two seventy seven. Your worship, hey, are you still hanging in there? Yeah, I'm hanging in here. Can I can I check how long I have to be mundane for, please? <laughs> Three years at least. <laughs> right. Yeah. You'll, you'll have no trouble doing that at all, Tim. It shouldn't be a problem. You will have read it. So the big the big show was the um, Algen Z National Conference, which um, was in Palmerston North, and and Palmerston North lived up to every single one of my expectations. Um, <laughs> there was um, there was panel discussions on a broad range of topics, and I think um, my fellow attendees would agree. If we never sit through another panel discussion again, it'll be any time too soon. Um, there was the usual suspects: the prime minister, the local government minister, minister of economic development, minister of environment, as well as Simon Watts, the opposition spokesperson. Um, future for local government, you've got their thoughts there, and I see that their um, the release of their next report's been delayed by another couple of weeks. It'll be the end of October, um, but as I've put, interesting times ahead. Interesting though too that I think for a lot of people, and probably myself up to about a year ago, I thought this was going to be all about amalgamations, and it's not really mentioned there at all. There's just so much more to it than anything like that. So. The new council will have to have its eye very firmly on that as another wave that we're going to have to ride or get washed over by us. 
Um, we had Kieran McAnulty um, join us in chambers with some of the councillors who were able to attend on that day, and he's got around most of the um, councils, rural and provincial councils, which is a good effort given there's 54 of them. Um, <clears throat> probably the highest ranking government person we've had in our council chambers possibly ever. Um, and it was good too when the floods hit, he was on the phone to me just going, he's all under control, is everything fine? So that's what you want from a uh, Ministry of Civil Defence or Emergency Management, I should say. Oh, I see I've got it wrong there as title. Um, went to the Scott Sod turning at Cromwell Primary, which was excellent. Um, the opening of the Fahara at the Cromwell Early Learning Centre was also excellent. Went to the rugby, which wasn't because the goats lost. Um, if you ever get a chance and you want to have a look, go and have a look at Forest Lodge Orchard near Cromwell. It's really quite inspiring. His, his, um, on his profit and loss this year, his fuel and diesel bill was zero. The whole thing's electrified and a lot of that comes from the sun and the wind. Um, and he's now got a house there which um, is modular. So when you have a look at it, it's quite brilliant because as he's built it, as his orchard grows, they just simply unbolt a wall bang another couple of panels in and bolt the wall back on and suddenly there's an extra bedroom. So it was um, it was good to watch. Um, had a tour through the Lake Dunstan water supply. Can't wait to, uh, well, I can say it now, can't wait to open that in April next year. Um, spoke to the Alex Lyons Club, five predictions for Central in five years time, which was interesting because it pretty much lined up to um, some earlier predictions, although the time frame was a bit out. Um, noting, of course, the flooding, the effect that that had on our wastewater treatment plant in Omako, which um, got me a good grilling on national radio, was a fun way to start the day. Um, and also the effect it's had just the diff very, very difficult time on our roads. And I know people are frustrated, but um, you've seen the effect on farms and our roads are no different. For thrust, frost, thaw, then rain, then more frosts. Um, Business breakfasts, everybody's short of staff. That's the biggest thing they talk about. Um, the AGM of LGNZ, where I we were a seconder to the policy that LGNZ National Council can't go away and do things such as um, sign up to the Memorandum of Understanding with government without talking it over with their um, full contingent beforehand. I think that goes a long way to the calls that we're getting to resign from LGNZ my view is that's that's not perhaps the best way to go and the best way to go is to work with changing the things within the organisation that you may not be happy with. So that was passed. Went to a Roxborough Hall fundraising night, the first time I've been to a drag queen show. Um, good fun and great to see it was a sellout. Um, the Valley supporting diversity and supporting the hall. Um, welcome Tracy to the Manuhita Kia Exemplar Catchment Governance Group. Um, which um, is designed to set the priorities for government funding that's going to assist in uh, lifting the um, quality of the water in that river. Um, another ministerial responsible working group meeting with Minister Nash. And um, I've written to Minister of Immigration Wood um, about a lot of our shortages, and some of those were actually addressed a week later. Um, in their announcement at the weekend, only some of it, mind you, but I'm glad to see that he took notice and dealt with my letter straight away. So um, that's um, what I've got. If anybody has any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you, Worship. Do you have any questions or interrogations I want to undertake over the Monday night for being a mayor? <laughs> Very thoroughly explored. That's why you're unopposed now. I've got one Monday. <laughs> Yes, just, just listening to your report, um, I wonder what the effect would be if local government New Zealand set up its own inquiry into the future of local government. Because yes. based on past, past performance, I'll just completely fold into whatever the government comes down the turnpike with. No, I Where think that's, um, the, the, the future of local government panel has been convened by the sector uh, rather than the government. and for uh, some people will treat this with joy and others cynicism, but at conference, Prime Minister Ardern said that the government will do what the sector wants it to do and isn't leading those reforms.